Out on the highway, running a well-equipped rig is vital. But even the best engineered, most technologically advanced truck is not enough. To travel the road to success, you also have to drive right from the start. Getting optimum performance and fuel economy from your CAT engine with a CERT technology is the goal. And there's no one better to discuss the best ways to reach that goal than Phil Hook, a man who is well known throughout the trucking industry for promoting fuel management and driver education. Phil has been an independent businessman, a driver for nearly 40 years, and CAT's top driver trainer since the early 80s. He's conducted hundreds of driver education seminars for dozens of fleets throughout North America. I'm Phil Hook, and this is one of the most impressive engines on the market today, a heavy-duty CAT C15 with a CERT technology. You know, I've been working with truck drivers and their CAT engines for over 20 years, and I've seen a lot of changes, but never anything quite like this. You might already know about the four systems that make a CERT technology unique. A proven high flow air system, precision combustion with an advanced fuel system, integrated electronics, and a simple, effective exhaust after treatment. But did you know about the fifth thing that makes these engines so special? It's the driver. Because to get the best performance and fuel economy out of CAD engines with a CERT technology, you have to not only spec them right, but also drive them right. Take it from me, this is a whole new deal for drivers. These new engines sound different, they feel different, and they demand different driving skills. That's why I'm here, to guide you through the new techniques you need in order to make the most of every mile on the road. So let's go for a ride with a couple of truck drivers, Ray and Steve. Ray's an old hand. He's an owner-operator leased to R&Z Transport. Steve's a young man, just hired by the fleet, and trying to learn to do things right. Ray's truck is powered by a CAT C15 with a CERT technology, and it's properly specced for rear end gearing, transmission, tire size, and the like. More about that later. Right now, let's check in with our drivers. That's a good looking rig, Ray. What kind of engine you running? Oh, I've been a cat guy for years, Steve. Yeah. Hard to beat a C-15. In fact, the whole R&Z fleet is specced with C-15s and drivetrains just like this one. I'm glad to hear that. I got used to this engine a few years back with another fleet. Well, get ready to get used to something else. This is the new C-15 with the CERT technology. Looks about the same to me. Well, maybe so. But you definitely need to drive it differently to get the best mileage and performance. But that's what I'm here to show you. Ready to roll? I will be by the time the engine's warm. Well, consider this your first lesson. There's really no need for a long warm-up time on this diesel. Just check the oil and coolant and jump in and fire it up. By the time you finish your walk-around inspection, the air pressure will be up and you'll be good to start moving. Hmm. Okay, go ahead. Oh, me? <laughs> you might as well begin with the startup. Good man, keeping your foot off that throttle. Now let's take care of that walk around. Ray's right, on both counts. Good driving techniques start before you climb behind the wheel. And with an electronic engine like the CAT C15 with a CERT technology, it's best if you don't press on the throttle at startup. Also, Long warm-up times are not necessary. Just go easy on the throttle so you don't hurt the engine while it's cold. It'll warm up along with the drivetrain as you move through the terminal, and you'll be getting some good out of the warm-up fuel too. You can apply full power when the water temperature reaches normal operating range. Same story on cooldowns. Use low power and low RPMs pulling off the highway to eliminate the need for long cooldowns. And if that just can't be done, then about three minutes of idle time should be sufficient for cool down. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about even the most basic driving skills. That includes things like starting, idling, and getting up to speed to merge into traffic. So let's find out right now how to get rolling the right way 
to maximize performance and fuel economy. Okay, everything looks good. Let's head for the highway. And remember, stay off the throttle as we take off, just like you did when you started the engine. All you have to do is put it in low and ease out on the clutch. Starting in the lowest gear lets the engine pick up the load easier instead of slipping the clutch. the horses we're sitting on with this C-15. How'd I do getting her up to speed? Well, I know it's tempting to rev it up and bump the governor, but have you ever tried progressive shifting? Let me show you an easier and better way to do it. Now, I know where you're coming from. Back when I was starting out, it seemed like everyone went for the high RPMs and bumped the governor on every shift. That's because in the old days, the engines didn't make as much low-end torque. You had to use a lot of RPM to pull the next gear. But things have changed. You see, the trouble is, when you rev up the RPMs more than necessary, you're wasting fuel. It takes too long for the engine to fall back for the next gear. That can actually hurt the momentum you're trying to build. With progressive shifting, you use just enough RPM to get into and pull the next highest gear. Then the engine only needs a second or so to fall back to the RPM you need. It takes some practice, and in the beginning, you might not shift soon enough. No big deal. What about when you really have to get up to speed in a hurry? I don't need somebody getting angry at me because I'm holding them up and calling the number on the back of the trailer to report me to the safety manager. I'll admit there are ways to get up to speed faster. But no matter what you do, this 80,000 pound rig isn't gonna pick up speed like some 2,000 pound four wheeler. They'll always wanna get around you. And progressive shifting just might surprise you. It's not as slow as you think. And it does save fuel. And believe me, every fleet manager loves that. Using progressive shifting instead of bumping the governor just makes good sense. If you do it right, you gain some real advantages too. First of all, progressive shifting improves fuel economy because you're not using high RPMs. At the same time, it helps you continuously build momentum instead of losing it. And done correctly, progressive shifting will get you up to highway speed quicker than you think. Sure, there are ways to get up to speed faster. Ways that use more power, burn more fuel, and abuse the equipment. If you get in a bind, do what you have to do. But how often does that really happen? It's kind of like driving your personal vehicle. Nice and easy usually gets the job done better. And once you get used to progressive shifting, it's easier on you and your rig. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of how Ray's progressive shifting matches up to the way Steve still bumps the governor you'll see and hear the difference. Notice how Ray never gets the RPM above what the engine needs to pull the next gear. Meanwhile, Steve's revving up and then waiting for the RPMs to fall back. As you can see, both techniques get you up to speed at about the same time. Okay, Steve, let's get you behind a wheel again. I'll take this exit and we'll swap places. This is a good place to use the truck's momentum to your advantage. Coast in gear for as long as possible. The engine doesn't use any fuel while you're coasting in gear. Coasting is a real benefit for the economy-minded driver and easier on brakes too. 
The truck I just traded in had a half a million miles in the original brake lines. It's better all the way around, then. Exactly. Helps cool down the engine, too. If you wanted to take a break right now, you'd be ready to shut down as soon as you set the brake. You know, getting the most out of your CAD engine with a CERT technology involves much more than starting up and shifting correctly. In fact, it begins before you get behind the wheel. The best drivers manage for maximum performance. They do smart trip planning, minimize idle time, use cruise control, delay downshifts, and take advantage of the right drivetrain specs by employing a gear fast, run super slow gearing recommendation. Different transmission types also affect performance. For non-standard transmissions, be sure to refer to your owner's manual for driving instructions. But as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's go back to the boys in the truck for a demonstration. Good job, Steve. I can see you got things under control. You got the engine on cruise control. Yeah, the cruise is set at 64, but we're only at about 1350 RPM. Should be higher, shouldn't it? Nope. This new C15 is a little different than what you're used to. It has more usable torque in the lower RPM range, so it can pull harder and still give you good fuel economy. Well, speaking of pulling harder, light traffic and good weather like this, I wouldn't mind doing a little more than 64. Maybe so. But burning up the road is the fastest way to burn too much fuel. Believe it or not, at highway speeds, every mile per hour faster can cut your fuel economy by about a tenth of a mile per gallon. Yeah, but when you're behind schedule and you got to make up some time, you don't have much choice. That's why you need to make good choices before you get started. Plan ahead so you can stay on schedule. And don't get in a bind by starting late and having to make up for lost time. Avoid rush hours and construction areas if you can. And make sure you plan your route according to how much fuel you'll use, not just how fast you can get there. Good time management gets the job done more efficiently than fast driving. I got you. Long grade we're dealing with here. Time to downshift. Well, actually, you could have waited a little longer until you got down around 1,100 RPM. You want to stay in the tallest gear possible for as long as possible. Now, if you're on a much steeper pull, you may need to downshift earlier to compensate for loss of momentum between gears. But for most pulls, 1,100 RPM downshifts do fine. I don't know about that. I mean, you sure don't want to lug it and damage the engine. I know cat engines are tough, but still. Yeah, no problem. There was a time when Steve had a point. But you really can't hurt these new CAT engines by running them down around 1,100 RPM. You see, CAT has raised the torque in the lower end, in the 1,100 RPM range. That's why these engines sound and feel so different from what you're used to. But it's a sound and feel you'll really enjoy when you see the results. Great performance, less downshifting, and improved fuel economy. Same story on the optimum cruise speed of about 1,300 to 1,350 RPM. Lower than what you may be used to, but very efficient. However, specking 1350 RPM to run 65 may not be realistic for some heavy haulers. But you get the picture. Lower RPM save fuel. In a lot of ways, CAT engines with a CERT technology are a whole different animal. Their new lower RPM torque range has made it possible to spec the engine and drivetrain to provide good power at lower RPM. So what you may have known as gear fast, run slow, is now gear fast, run super slow. That simply means cruising down the road at lower RPM. You may also have to rethink how you spec the rear end gearing. Where you used to spec a 355 ratio, for example, you may need to consider a 336 or even a 325, depending on your application. One thing hasn't changed though, the way these engines monitor themselves. CAT engines with a CERT technology carry on the CAT tradition of advanced electronics and monitoring that make it easy for you to get the most out of every mile you travel.
by the way, don't forget to check your gauges and engine monitor once in a while. Tell the truth. I always figured those monitors are mostly for show. No, not really. Check out this digital display for the driver. It's called Cat Messenger. Not everyone specs it, but they should. Fortunately, R&Z makes sure it's in all our trucks. It keeps you up on all kinds of important engine and performance data, and in plain English rather than codes. Cat Messenger records fuel economy in several ways, too. What we're getting right now, by the trip, or lifetime, even by driver. By driver, huh? Just another way they try to keep tabs on you. Like the electronic parameters they set to hold back new drivers. Oh, whoa there. The parameters are really no big thing. In fact, every truck in the fleet is set up exactly the same way. No kidding? Every truck? Even this one. The thing is, you'll learn quickly that if you drive the way these engines should be driven, you won't even know the parameters are there. <laughs> I get the point. And I, I really appreciate the advice. I guess I'm just eager to show what I can do. Nothing wrong with that. I was young once. At least that's what they tell me. I don't remember much about it. <laughs> Cat engines equipped with a CERT technology. They're the most advanced truck diesels on the road today. But even with all the innovation, all of the electronics, and all of the technology, one vital part is still needed, the driver. To get the best performance and fuel economy from these engines, you have to spec them right and drive them right. In other words, it really pays to get it right from the start. <laughs>